Okay, um, one, two, three, action. Okay, um, what is up, guys? Fun here with Za once again, and here we have two owners of uh, the Zondes. Uh, Zontes. 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 <laughs> three ten. Uh, three ten. And then we have Chino and Faisal over here, the owners of these two beautiful uh, Zontes. Uh, three. three T310. Uh, T310. 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 Okay. <laughs> Awkward lah. First time seeing these bikes by the way. Eh? Azar, what you make of this? I must say this Zontes is a very beautiful bike. It's a very beautiful. Almost as GS common kan? Com uh. GS very common. We, we see on the road. But Zontes has a unique feature that is uh, slightly different than the GS. A bit of introduction lah. Eh? Zontes, the company is founded in 2017. And uh, it's a Chinese manufacturer of motorcycles. This particular model is the T310, the ADV, uh, sports store class of motorcycle. Okay, so I don't know anything much about this brand or model, but I've read a couple of reviews, and this bike is described as a cheaper alternative to the BMW GS and Ducati Multistrada. It is also known as the apa? Tesla of what? The Tesla. I, I read in one of the uh, motorcycle website reviews, you know, they brand this as the Tesla of the motorcycles. <laughs> yes, and due to this is because of the technologies that is involved in the bikes. Lah. Our engine specs is a 312 single cylinder CC, water cooled DOHC with fuel injection system and a 6 speed manual transmission. So in Singapore, it's only distributed by the Chungkok Agency. And so far, this is the first time I'm seeing it, lah. and which is the only. You guys are the only people that I know who owns this bike right now. There are a few others. Uh, so I uh, just want to ask you guys uh, why. Okay, maybe Faisal, you want to share why you got the Zontes? Oh, I basically got it for the looks. Mm. It looks big for 300 cc bike. Uh. Uh. And it's cheap. Uh. One major factor is cheap. Mm. Besides the looks, performance, mm. pickup. A pickup is there. Uh. Uh. Fuel consumption. Fuel consumption. Fuel consumption is also very good. Even though my workplace is very near, ah. <laughs> uh, I only top up petrol full tank 19 liters. Mm. Uh, it last me for two weeks. Mm. Hey, what about you, Chino? Why you got the contest? You guys are best friends, ah? Actually, I got <laughs> recommended by my uh. brother-in-law. Uh. Okay, he got the first uh, first generation of Zontes, which is they said uh, Gen One. They comes with uh, sports rim. But for ours, it's Gen 2, they come with spoke rim, mm. which is likely more beautiful than the sports rim, mm. which we can compare with GS uh, 310 also. I read about the uh, GS 310, which my younger sister also wrote GS 310. So there's no much difference with GS 310. Besides that, the looks, of course, and uh, I'm really, really excited to go for like Malaysia trip. Mm. With this bike, adventure bike, you know, uh, yeah, that's what I love about it. So mm -hmm. your intention uh, to buy the to get the Zontes is to go touring, uh? yeah. Yes. Oh my that's god. That's the thing. Okay, to me, uh, when I first saw this bike, uh, it's the first time I'm seeing it. By the way, uh, it looks like a GS, you know. Uh, <laughs> we get that a lot, uh, We get that. Uh, lot. Yeah. The CC might might look small, 310, uh. but the body. Uh, the body. Is yeah, big, uh. yeah, it's big, you know. It's almost similar to Zontes, the looks. Uh. I think it will be the Benelli TRK 502. Mm. That has the uh, somewhat similar look uh, mm. to the Zontes compared to the GS. So Faisal and Chino actually uh, give told us a bit about these bikes lah, and uh, I must say there's quite a bit of technology involved. And <laughs> first and, time I'm seeing it. Yeah, and we are actually uh, uh, mind blown, you know, uh. by the when, when they explain to us the technology that involved, the, the bits and pieces, the gadgetry yes. of the, the bike, uh, we were like, wow, okay, that's so cool, this, man. This, this gun, uh, you, want, you guys might show us, uh, because we are not sure. How do you guys uh, compare this bike uh, to other Class 2A adventure bikes, like the CB400X or the GS310? Uh. There are other mainstream models on the, in the market, but why uh, this Zontes uh, is the, the one that you choose? Okay, for me, why I choose the Zontes, you compared with the Honda, right? Mm -hmm. This actually looks better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks more stylish, more rugged. Mm -hmm. Compared to the BM, uh, the design is a bit blunt. Yeah, a bit, a bit boring. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> a bit. And also compared to 400X, now, which my my closest friend, uh -huh. we went to touring together to Malaysia with my closest friend. Uh, he ride 400X. The looks of the 400X and Zontes, I can say that Zontes is much more beautiful yeah. for me. But the difference is 
Yeah, 400X have two cylinders, but oh. it is two cylinders, but, but Zontes is sil- single. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, in terms of uh, maintenance, maintenance should wise, be yeah, should be better because it's cheaper than the two cylinder bike, uh, yeah, or four cylinder bike like Super Four. So after riding these bikes for almost to, close to a year, how do you find its performance? Uh, okay, I experienced like after running in the bike, I went to Malacca with my friends, which is loaded mm-hmm. with two side panels and the top box with my wife, mm-hmm. which currently a heavy load. Everything, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, okay, I mean oh. everything is a heavy load, right? Ah, uh, okay. I ran maximum up to 145 km per hour and the performance is good. The stability is much better. So even at 140, it's still stable. It's still it, stable. I can I can ride with one hand, single hand. What's the top speed that you have done on this bike? <laughs> for me, the top speed for this bike I've gone is uh, 160. 160. 160. Yeah. Okay. Not bad, eh? In terms of speed, speed wise, um, uh, the top speed I've hit is 160. Mm. Okay. Okay. But on paper, theory wise, uh-huh. this bike can go top speed 150. But there are cases mm-hmm. where it has reached uh, 180. Oh, okay. So for me, when I reach 160 already, right, it's uh, okay. Time for me to slow down. It's <laughs> <really fast already. laughs> okay, because uh, when you reach that speed, uh, does the bike feel like you know very light or, or wobbly? Oh, there's wobbly no wobbly vibration whatsoever. It's very smooth. Like what he said, it can ride one hand, no problem. You may feel the vibration for a starting point where you reach uh. 110, 120. But after a while of riding, like more than 120 right you the vibrate kind of uh you can feel the smoke already right? yeah, because mm. i guess it's made for touring that's why i think they have engineered it in such a way but when you go on high speeds it shouldn't wobble or vibrate so much right? yeah, yeah. Right, correct we mm. can't say that there is no vibration now it's uh. totally out of question because it's a single cylinder bike mm. of course there is vibration even as Two cylinder bike, there is also vibration if you ride that kind of speed. You know, single cylinder remind me of what? Not? The Royal Enfield. <laughs> ah. Himalayan, eh? Ah, Himalayan, yes. Remind me of that, no? We all know that these bikes are quite cheap, lah. But how cheap is it? How how much do you buy at that time? Okay, at that point of time, with COE, I got my bike 14.5. 14.5? Wow, yeah, the machine price is uh, 11.4k. And yeah, this is considered. Among the four bre- four models, this is considered the most expensive one. Oh. Yeah, ours is T model. There is V, mm. there is R, there is S. Mm. All yeah. adventure bikes, lah. Uh, no, 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 no. no. Oh. One is like a street chopper. Like, uh, one is a street bike. One is a sports bike, touring bike, and a mm. cruiser. Then anyway, I think the shop that uh, you told us, like, they throw in some freebies, ah. Uh. <laughs> like this. The side panels and the uh. rear box. Oh my god, these are like you know. I see like two or three hundred if you were to get it on our no. own. With the, with <laughs> the bracket, with the bracket uh, you can hit four hundred dollars. Very solid. So, uh, can you freebie leave? with the bike, eh? Ah, uh. <laughs> that's cool, man. And also the crash bar, also. At the Benelli also have just have an offer, you know. If you buy the the Benelli and then they they will give the crash bar and the box as well. <laughs> but uh, uh, for your information, crash bar is kind of built in together with the bike. Oh, it's not together. that they give the crash bar, no. Uh, it's already it's a built in the it's stock in the bike. Okay guys, this one a very important question. How far can you go on this bike on full tank? And roughly one liter can go how far? Because our bike here is uh, 19 liters. Uh-huh. So it's quite a big tank. Lah. Okay. Anything, yeah. okay. Um, for me the furthest I've been is if you have heard uh, Kari Kambing Pak uh-huh. uh, I've been there. Mm-hmm. From Singapore, I top up, go there. I come back, I mean go there, I, I don't just stay there, I went riding around, uh-huh. I came back, I still left with two bars. I've tried before like a uh, full tank, mm-hmm. but the bar almost reached reserve tank, I can hit up to 370 to 390, but of course lah, I'm not the those... Very uh, daring uh, to go on an empty tank. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, better don't uh. so, so do you guys describe yourself as a passive rider or a aggressive rider? Passive. I can say both lah for me. Balance are uh, you balance. balance. Depends on the situation. Yeah. <laughs> because besides that, mm-hmm. when on circuit breaker, I used to do food delivery uh-huh. on this bike. Uh-huh. But without a side panel of course. Uh. So when I do food delivery, I might get aggressive. 
on this bike. Yeah, yeah, we see fast, uh. <laughs> we see a lot of uh, riders uh, out there yeah. doing food delivery. They they ride like <laughs> you know, like like there's no tomorrow, you know. Uh, yes. <laughs> any issues with the bike? This one, I think, uh, seven months old shouldn't have any issues, lah. Since this bike is new, you will, will not be facing any problem yet, right? Yeah. But how about uh, those riders in the zone test group? Did they ex share any experience of uh, mechanical or technical issues with the bike? Um, what they shared is basically uh, electronic wise mm -hmm. because they are new to the system, right? Uh -huh. So usually when there's an alarm going on when mm -hmm. you are riding, they don't know what to do. But actually, it's just a small issue of changing replacement of a battery on the transponder. Uh -huh. I see, I see. But for me, the main issue for me with this bike is there's no main stand. Uh. Wow. <laughs> Even after market also no main stand? No, there's no main yeah. stand. Uh. Because the underbelly, the pen, right, uh. is too thick for main stand. Ah, oh. I see, I see, I see. Oh, I so see. if you want to install a main stand, we have to change the whole pipe system. Ah, I see. So that is not legal yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know when that will be legal. Uh. Yeah, I think everybody's waiting for that. <laughs> because, um, the ones in Malaysia, uh. they already have it. Uh. They've already installed. I've seen it before. Yeah, like Acroprovic, Axel. Uh, mm. Oh, yeah. so there is like aftermarket accessories for the Vontes? There is, there really? is. But is not much, la, not much, but uh. there is. Because uh. given the this bike is just came out, la, I think we need to wait for a few years. La. Yeah. Mm. Uh. So, so there is uh, in Malaysia and Thailand. They have, they have. Zontes also? They have Zontes. Yeah. So, which means we uh, we can expect a lot of uh, aftermarket accessories from uh, from Malaysia yes. and Thailand. Because, Definitely. Uh, <laughs> yes. Because like the Aerox, uh, because it's available in both countries. Uh, uh, they have a big bike culture over there. Mm. So, definitely, I think they're going to come up with aftermarket accessories for this Zontes also. La. So what is the maintenance schedule for you guys? How how do you how often do you uh, do your maintenance and what are the things that you do during your servicing? For me, I just follow what is um, being told by the dealer itself. Mm -hmm. um, every 2,000 clicks, 2,000 men? Uh, yeah, the first one is uh, 1K of course. Mm. Then the next one is uh, 2K. Then after that, it was uh, every 3K. 3K. Every 3K, uh, yeah. go for an oil change. Mm -hmm. Oil change, then uh, every alternate oil change, right? Change the oil filter as well. You know, like, this is a uh, China bike. Lah. Mm. And uh, like my bike also, Hidayah and Zaz uh, bike, the CB190X. Lah. Uh, I think there's some issues with the parts and accessories. Lah. Uh, do you guys have any, do you guys encounter that? I did encounter that once uh, uh, for parts. I've been hit by uh, lorry crane mm. in front, so there's a bit of uh, you know scratch here and there. Mm. With my headlight, my windshield, mm -hmm. okay, and the cover, the black cover on, on the headlight. It's not that difficult to get the the parts. It's only that they have to order, and not bad. It comes like uh, within two weeks. But other than the rest of the parts, I think it's not that difficult, mm. Yeah, but but some like uh, you know extended accessories like. The extender, what they call it? Bar extender, you can order online and everything. Yeah. Mm. This question is a bit controversial. It's because the Zontes is quite new in the market, being brought in by one dealer, yeah, right? Correct. How confident are we that this Zontes will be in the market for the next four, five years down the road? Because we have bikes like the Skomadi being brought in Singapore, mm. but the dealership has already ended. There's no more dealer. There's nobody bringing in parts yeah. and there's nobody bringing in uh, new Skomadi bikes you know mm -hmm. so yeah. the Skomadi owners mm -hmm. right now are left in a lurch when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, spare parts so they have to get spare parts from KL from mm -hmm. the de dealer in KL because there's no more dealer in Singapore so how confident are we can will the Zontes dealer remain in the market mm -hmm. considering that this bike is new still people have not yet Recognize. Uh, recognize this bike as a reliable bike, uh, okay? Because it hasn't reached the five-year gap, you know, five-year yes, mark. Yeah. If a bike has uh, come to a five-year mark, okay, we know that okay, this bike, the dealer, still around. I can still get the spare parts, but, but because this bike is new, 
we need to grow that confidence level in new buyers. You know, our the reason why we have this bike reviews is also to get owners, uh, riders, new riders to know which bike are in the market right now. Mm. So we want to know want people to buy. The more people buy, mm. the more parts are available. Yeah, because the right. bike availability is high. Yes. Yeah, right. oh, when the parts are available, the parts get cheaper. Your repairs will get cheaper. We want to know. Are you confident that uh, the dealer might be around? Mm. The the bike and the the spare parts might be around in the next what five years? Uh, can you believe? Yeah, really I can see the number growing, but then not as huge like Aerox, mm. like those kind of bike lah. Mm. Not very popular bike. Mm. But this kind of bike, yeah, it's a class two A, not a class two B bike. Mm. Class two B, of course lah. I think a lot of people might get it. It's mm. out of many. Yeah, but then, no. okay. Yes. Um, for me, I'm confident that. The next five or maybe six years, mm -hmm. uh, there will still be parts available for this bike, mm -hmm. and uh, because basically because is the number is growing in Europe, mm -hmm. and every time whenever I go for my maintenance check, right, mm -hmm. for my maintenance bike, the shop always bring in new shipments. Ah. Basically, because why the previous shipment sold out mm. means there are people buying in Singapore. The only thing is we are not seeing them on the road yet. Because uh, the numbers is maybe is they bring in is too few. So I've we, been told like uh, from the dealer itself, uh, mm. there's a Gen One bike which I told about uh, the Sports Rim, right? Mm. That only sold like not even two months out of stock, and they come coming in the new new generation, and yet there is another new generation after this. It's like the T2 upgrade, T2 upgrade. which mm. the rim is bigger mm. than this. 19 yeah, inch. 19 okay. inch. After this 310, the whole four model came out. Yeah. They came out a new bike which is 155cc, 125cc. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's cool, man. I don't want to be Yeah. So, the marketing factor also plays a part. I think if uh, the company has uh, will do a little bit more marketing on the bike uh, and make it more recognized on the road. So definitely people we curious want to know eh what bike is this yeah so high tech so like ni yeah. motorcycle ke spaceship you all <laughs> <laughs> like what i i saw in uh, facebook itself uh, the fan page the uh, zontest page on facebook hmm. that's every time a new a new rider that you know a new owner hmm. who bought this bike and they post okay i just bought this bike i just got this bike you no know, it means that there's always a, a uh, people buying the bike. Um, okay, any modifications you guys made to the bike? Okay, basically for me, the bike is already fully equipped. Fully equipped, yeah. The only thing we mm. even um, handphone charger uh, is mm. built in. I think uh, you guys added in fault light. Uh, uh, fault light, yes. The uh, side panels mm -hmm. and the side box they are not original, but the dealer give it to you. Yes. yes. Right. When you want to top up the petrol, uh. there's a button here. Mm. This button here, mm. and it will, this one will pop up. Yeah, just close back and settle. The screen is TFT display. Um, you can change the different modes. Clock, brightness. It even has Bluetooth. It can connect to your Bluetooth handphone or earpiece. Okay. Yeah, this is the voltmeter. It's a bit small, but you can see that the voltmeter is there. Sit button. You have to on this first. One time press and you sound the clicking sound. And just open. The battery is down there. And you know the battery you can charge at the power adapter, any any power adapter lah, socket lah. So the battery is You can charge like each scooter. Ah, yeah. lithium. Yeah, yeah, lithium. Correct. Uh, also, it's not. No, no. We have uh, there's below there's a compartment there. Below there's compartment that you can open, and there's a cable. To charge. I got Chino's transponder right here, so I'm gonna walk away. Yeah, his bike is still turned on. Yeah. So if it's uh, so when I walk away, yeah, the bike should turn off, lah. Is it off? Not too far. <laughs> so when there's a beeping sound, uh, it shows that the bike is already off. Then when I come near, then he must actually press a button to start the bike, lah. Look at this. Hey, put it on. Very beautiful. Actually, you can change the theme of the. So you can also change the theme. So for, for okay. Seems okay. Strings. One of the common problem is the transponder. Mm. So uh, what do you suggest? Okay. Uh, 
Only a simple act should do to rectify the problem. So I, I just carry on. I mean, you know, I want to ask you, uh, why you put this rubber ducky? A lot of riders going to put Why? Uh, I want to ask. Uh. It's just a common common thing for all the riders. Uh, mostly all, kebanyakan like uh, food delivery guy. For me, for me, what what I think is is a companion for us, <laughs> so, no. so that we, we are not being alone. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Yeah, food delivery is really tough for us. You know, hot and rain and shine. Mm. So this is our companion. Uh. So final question, guys. What's the best memories you guys have with the bike? Before this, I've been not riding a bike for ten years. Okay, mm. after I got married, after I got kids, I've not been riding a bike for ten years. Then uh, after a while, my kids grown up. Like my, I have one uh, seven and ten years old kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, they grown up. I decided to uh, get my class two A, which is I failed ten years ago. <laughs> class two A. Okay. Okay. Then I fed up. I decided to just quit to take my riding. So I just sell my my previous my last bike was a Spark One Three Five. So I just sell it off. And uh, yeah, I decided to get my class two A because. It seems that when I go to JB with my my other bike, uh, which is uh, sub ride from my brother-in-law, I'm the owner of the bike lah. Mm. He just sub ride the bike, so yeah. I'm not using that bike. So when once in a while I need to go to JB with my wife, mm. using that Spark One Three Five, I feel so tiring. Yeah. So I decided to take my class two A and get a bigger bike. Mm. Yeah. And after running in, I straight away to went to Malacca, and that was my first time riding so long journey. And it's been a great memory. Uh. Ah, yeah, okay. it's wonderful. Uh. How about you, Faisal? So basically, yeah, it's when strangers come up to you, when your bike is parked, you come get down for the bike or going to the bike, strangers come up to you and ask you, what bike is this? Uh? It's a Zontes. Uh. Zontes uh, T model 310. Mm. It's very nice, it looks like BM and it looks like BM. Uh. Ah. So for me, that is the best feeling that one can get. Uh. Uh. Someone actually come up to you and ask you about the bike that you are riding. Praise, you praise you. When you when somebody praise your bike, you'll be like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've been hey, come on, hey, come on. Uh. <laughs> I've been experienced in Westmore when I'm uh, when I want to came into the parking lot. Uh. There's one guy riding a 400X. Uh. He was just staring at me like, uh. never blink the eyes at all. I was like, uh. what is he looking at? <laughs> <laughs> then after that, I parked my bike, then he come and approached me and asked me, I said, wow, this bike is beautiful, man. Uh, I, I feel like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, guys, so thank you guys for sharing your story. Alright. And, uh, wow. Thank you. No words can express my appreciation to them for telling us about this bike. Sharing uh. about this bike. So, yeah. Zontes riders out there, if you if you are watching this video, if you have anything to comment, anything to share about the bike, mm. uh, whatever knowledge that you want to share or experience riding the bike, just type in the comments below, okay? Yeah, and um, we're going to end this vlog here and uh, we will see you in the next one.